Today is National Go Home on Time Day. It is organised by the Australia Institute, which is concerned staff are being ripped off by working thousands of unpaid extra hours. To discuss this, we're joined by Director of the Institute's Centre for Future Work, Jim Stanford. Jim Stanford, good morning. Welcome to News Breakfast. Thank you, Virginia. How many extra unpaid hours of work are we doing each year? Well, it's mind-blowing, actually. Uh, this is the eighth annual Go Home on Time Day sponsored by the Australia Institute. Each year we do a big survey of Australians and we ask them, how many hours do you work? How much do you get paid for? How much unpaid overtime are you doing in all the different forms? You know, checking emails in the morning before you go to work, working through lunch, uh, staying late without getting paid, uh, checking your emails and returning calls again when you get home. Uh, on average, for employed Australians, they're working about 4.6 hours of unpaid overtime each week. Uh, that adds up uh, over the year. It's about 14% of all the time you get paid for. So, you know, you think of Australians go to work, they get paid, and then they do another 14% uh, for their employers without payment. It's a, it's a lot, and it's added up, as you've got here this morning, to 48 million unused holiday days worth about $11.1 billion annually. Why aren't people taking, taking leave? Well, that's another uh, dimension of this problem of uh, excess work and the threats to our leisure time. Uh, we've also asked Australians about their annual leave, the uh, tradition, if you like, of the great Aussie holiday. And uh, the first problem there is, uh, Virginia, about a third of Australians don't have any entitlement to annual leave. Uh, think of people working casual jobs mm. or self-employment. Um, and then of those who are entitled to annual leave, about half of them don't take their full leave. And many of them are citing work-related pressures. Uh, there's too much to do at work. They're too busy. Uh, they're worried uh, about impressing their boss or their job security. Yep. Some of them are saving it up uh, to use later. So both on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, work is creeping into our leisure time. And then even that, that one chance a year to get away, uh, recuperate with your family somewhere, you know, put the sausages on the Barbie and everything else, that is in jeopardy as well. Well, look, it might be possible for people or you even at the Australia Institute to go home on time, but it's not easy for a lot of Australian workers. The culture doesn't allow it. In order to be seen to be committed, you've got to be working longer hours. You're required to do work that takes you beyond your formal break time. Yes. How do you push back against that without jeopardising your work? Well, you've hit the nail on the head, Virginia, about what the problem is. I mean, you know, of course, there are people who love their jobs and, and don't mind putting in some extra sure. hours, but it isn't by and large a voluntary choice uh, in my judgment. It does reflect the, the compulsion, you know, the stated or unstated expectation that you're going to be there for your job uh, no matter how long it takes. Jim, just, and, to, just to jump in there, Jim, is that the sense that you get from the survey you do each year, that, that people are working those longer hours and staying back, largely not because they want to, but under duress? Absolutely. You know, and duress can come in various shapes and forms. It may not be the boss pointing the finger at you and saying, you don't stay late tonight, you're fired. Sure. But it does come in different implicit forms, the expectation that, you know, you won't get a promotion or you might not be around that long unless you show that work ethic, especially given the huge share of Australian workers who don't have a permanent job anyway. They are working casual. So that's where, you know, the fear that you're going to be out the door if you don't impress the boss uh, is, is that much stronger. So this in turn reflects the very weak state of, uh, of the labour market. You know, you've got unemployment and especially high levels of underemployment, all of this part-time and casual work. That is very much contributing to this willingness, mm. uh, you know, in scare quotes, willingness of Australians to put in those extra hours without getting paid for it. And it's part of the reason we organize this day is to start a conversation. It may not be possible for every individual to go home today, but at least think about it. Have a conversation with your workmates. Maybe have a conversation uh, with your boss and say at some point, you know, we have to draw a line. That's my job. That's my life. Let's see if people feel emboldened to do that. Jim Stanford, good to talk to you today. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you, Virginia.